What's up, Nerf Nation? This is your boy Nomadico here, and we are back with another Blaster review. Uh, we are actually reviewing something a little bit different. I know I always say that, always a little bit different, but this Blaster actually came to me from a website or a service that a lot of people don't like to use. They think it's a scam. They think it's a credit card gathering uh, machine. Um, they think that your PII, personal identifiable identification information, is going to be um, compromised. Uh, but I went ahead and used it using some cybersecurity know-how and ordered a XYL unicorn, at least that's what it looks to be, um, off of Timu. So let's see if you can actually find anything that is worth quality when it comes to foam fleeing off of Timu. Now, you've heard me mention Timu in the past in some of my original videos regarding purchasing some of the hard tip darts. Uh, if you choose to use those, Yes, you can actually find them on there, and you can get a pretty decent deal as long as you don't mind that some of them come damaged. However, uh, if you're looking for premium quality stuff, I tell you that Timu, not the best place to go with. Uh, some of their quote-unquote hyper-like blasters are kind of eh. I haven't done a full review on one yet, only because it was so underwhelming, that or I should say underperforming, that I kind of wanted to eat it out the window, but... Maybe I'll make a video just to show you how laughably bad it is. But we have high hopes for this package. Now, I ordered this one on Saturday. I was browsing through it, saw what looked to be the unicorn, and said, I haven't had that blaster yet. And they had it on sale for $85. So I was like, you know what? That's less than out of darts, and it's free shipping. Let's see how long it takes to get here. So I went ahead and placed the order on Saturday. It is now Wednesday and it arrived to my home. So let's go and actually open up this packaging and see just what's inside of here because it does say XYL on here, so we'll see. Let me uh, tear open this packaging here. Da -da -da -da. This is some heavy-duty wrapping that they put on here. It's almost like they used a uh, construction bag of sorts. But it got here, all right. The box isn't looking to too damaged, so... Now, I will tell you that this warehouse where this was delivered from came from New York. It did not come from overseas. So we will see, of course, it is a Chinese manufacturer. Uh, according to this label, it was from one of the provinces in China. Uh, foam Blaster Toy is what it's described as. And manufacturer is, oh my gosh, that is a really long manufacturer's name. I can, I'm not even going to try to butcher it. Uh, but it's from Peng Ping Golu. Um, in Shanghai City, China. So, we'll see. Toss that away. And here we have the box. So, let's see what's in here. Okay. Yep, in green lettering, it is, says Unicorn. Now, the box does have a little bit of damage on it. Uh, that's probably from shipping, but we'll see. Let's see if I uh, got paid a decent price or if I'm getting hosed here. Okay. Well, let's see here. We have the main body of the blaster. There is some assembly required. That is pretty neat. And it does say unicorn on the actual barrel itself, so this is in fact a unicorn. There is some assembly required, here is the spring, and yeah, it looks like it all came in here, so score one for Timu, it actually has a quality product in here. Now, this makes me feel comfortable because I also saw in there that they had worker butt stocks for about $15, so roughly the same price you'd find on Amazon, um, but if you are one person who likes to shop on Timu, you can go there, and you can take advantage of their payment plans so you don't pay for it all at once. So that's kind of cool. Um, of course, Worker itself will not sell the products on there. It's through third-party suppliers. So there you have it. And we got a magazine as well. It is a talent-compatible magazine from what I can tell. 
So let's go ahead and actually uh, try to put this thing together, shall we? Okay, so we are going to actually have to read the instructions on putting this thing together because, yeah. And it looks like the instructions are in a blend of English and Chinese. So I'm in luck. And we have pictures. So it's just show you what the actual blaster looks like. It says standard one and then standard two setup. So let's see which one we're going to use. I think I'm going to do standard two, um, which has the the gun's butt, uh, butt stock, butt stock, butt stock, butt stock, butt stock, ha <laughs> ha, butt. All right, so, okay, so, of course, this is going to go here, because this is the gun's butt. Step two. We're going to take this piece right here, and we attach... This via picket to your rail. All right. So, y'all get to see me struggle with this. This is good. I like this. This would be a fun video for y'all watching. You'd be like, oh, look, Robotico, you're such an idiot. But, eh, it's all for your entertainment, folks. Now, mind you, it does say that some light assembly is required. So I love that this is classified as light assembly. It is quite a bit of assembly. We do have our Allen keys here, which is kind of nice. So those of you watching, if you're a fan of Legos, you are going to love this blaster because it's kind of like putting together a Lego set. Oh boy. And then we're going to take our Allen rip key, wrench, whatever. Start rotating it until that bolt gets secured on the nut. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't bust a nut here while doing this, folks, so be careful when you're tightening your bolt. Because if you go too hard, you might bust a nut prematurely. Now this bolt is actually going a little bit uh, slower than the other one. The other one kind of slid right in. This one's taking its sweet little time. So I will tell you, um, just from putting this together, uh, this is very reminiscent, in my opinion, of when I got my Game Face Prime, um, that there was some, I guess, assembly required, but... Uh, this one definitely has more assembly than a Game Face Prime. After all, when you have to assemble a blaster yourself, you get to know it. Let's know how it works, how it functions better. At the risk of sounding uh, weird, you almost build a bond with a blaster, so to speak, when you modify it and when you assemble it yourself. So that is that. Now, we have that assembled. You know, I have my plumber's tape around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. We might as well actually make sure this gets a good seal. Now, it looks like there's a little bit of lubrication on here already on the O-ring, but I'm going to actually apply a little bit more lubrication in here. Super lube! When you really want things to move in and out nice and smooth. That should fit right there. That spring goes there. And let's take a look at what else we got here. So now it looks like this just attaches to the main body of the blaster. Okay, and that goes like so. And these supposedly just clip in. Quick release. And then the longer one goes into the back. Like so.
Now I feel like I'm missing some steps here. And it looks like I am. Oh, joy. All right, so what am I missing here? What did I do? What did you do, Normatico? All right, so one of the things that is not clear in the instructions is that these little pieces are only if you wish to cover the part where, which is the top sliding prime. Um, if you don't wish to use the top sliding prime, that is when you install these. If not, you're going to install Gunfish Bone 1, um, which is the orange piece here, Picatinny Rail, uh, on the top. And there's two bolts that hold that secure in there. So that was the mistake that I made when I started to put this thing together. The instructions are not very clear. However, anyone with half a brain, of which I do not, seeing as I just spent eight hours looking at an Excel screen all day at my regular nine to five job. Um, yeah, anyone would have figured that one out immediately, but go figure. I blame the cough medication. There we go. Now, according to this, this has one more section right here, which is supposed to be tightened. And that most assuredly does slide up there and connect that way. So I am thinking that that is how that connects. I don't know where this is saying. This claims, and I'm going to show you here on the, uh, on the instructions. It is claimed that there is a third bolt that holds down the back. Let me see it. Right there on the disassembly. However, none of these bolts, none of these uh, screws, I should say, um, or the bolts, uh, actually fits inside the hole there, from what I can see. They are way too thick to fit in there. That's kind of neat. Okay. I will show you what's kind of neat here in a second. Because the way they designed this, you can still use the iron sight even with this top rail. That looks like that works just like that. And this is one setup already. This blaster is technically ready to fire, I guess. Interesting. Okay, so obviously it does come up with a dual sliding mechanism. You can either use the pump grip if you wanted to, or if you just want to do a top prime a la a retaliator, you could go ahead and do that as well. Um, so that is pretty neat. Of course, the magazine, it is Talon compatible, um, so this should take any Talon magazine. And you have a mag release right here. Now the mag release is only on the right side, and let's see if it gravity drops. It does gravity drop, which is kind of nice. Um, so you have this piece of metal right here, which is possibly removable. I wouldn't though. Um, it doesn't feel too uncomfortable, though I could see where here, if you're holding it with your index finger, that might get uncomfortable for some. So if you wanted to install a piece of foam padding down here, uh, that probably would be in some people's best interest because after a while running with this, that might get uncomfortable on your hand. Um, this grip itself, it feels pretty comfortable for adult hands. I'll have to check, check, uh, check out with G-Rex to see what he thinks about it. And this is an extendable stock that is integrated into the system itself, which is kind of neat. So if you wanted to hold it farther out, you can do that. And if you wanted to go actually straight up close quarters, you could do that as well. So this is a close quarters uh, battle uh, blaster. And it promotes around 138 to 140 FPS. We're going to test that in the chronograph and see just how this works out. Now, I can tell you that there are upgrade springs available. If you were to get one of the uh, 1.8 upgrade springs, that should boost it into the 160 and above. Uh, so it pushes you right there into the super stock range. This is a blaster that is super stock, not quite ultra stock levels. 
Uh, I am sure that with an extended length of tubing, you can go ahead and actually bring that up into the ultra stock levels. I have heard tell of people hitting the 200 FPS range with this blaster, which if you get a prime that is as soft as this one and hitting 200 FPS, congratulations, because this is a very easy prime. So, of course, you are going to have some spare parts. Um, let's see what these are. So this is a secondary stock attachment. How does this clip in? That's what this is for. That's kind of cool. So this right here, you put the secondary stock point in here. And that slides right in. That locks this right in place. And this is an, is this is a, is this is an end strike barrel attachment? Hold that thought. Of course, I'm always testing to see just what kind of goofy things I can do. So this looks to be like an end barrel attachment, an end strike barrel lug attachment. And it is. Good golly all molly, it works. <laughs> okay, so that is kind of fun. You can use multiple barrel attachments, with, or sorry, multiple buttstock attachments, which is kind of nice. That is pretty phenomenal. Of course, you do have a trigger safety here. Down means it's engaged, up means it's disengaged, and you are set to go. Now, let's see how it performs, because I'll be honest with you, the price for this blaster, it is a little bit pricey, um, but if we're getting the uh, super stock performances that it promises, we'll see. You know, again, you can do a payment plan on Timu, so instead of paying the $90 that you would normally pay, you can actually split it up into multiple payments of like $25, and that's not bad at all. Up next, the chronograph test. So after some impressive numbers from the chronograph, we are actually out to do a distance test using the Unicorn. Um, so I will tell you with the chronograph, we tested with the darts that it comes with, which actually use some sort of harder foam, kind of like what you would find on the Ultra Darts, um, and it uses suction cup uh, tips, and that's when we got the higher numbers. I shot bamboos, and we got in the 159 range. So pretty decent numbers there with the harder darts. Um, I'd like to buy some more of those and actually uh, try to run those some more because it only comes with 10 and I don't want to lose them. Now, we are actually going to be testing with the red ruby darts, the Dart Zone Max darts for the distance, only because again, we had the black darts that came with this blaster on black pavement. They're going to be hard to find, so I don't want to lose my darts. And uh, let's see how far this can actually fire using the Max Ruby darts. Looks like we got some distance here. I'm gonna go recover those darts and we'll be back with the numbers. Okay, so with the straight shot, we got 105 feet and the angled shot got us up to 150 feet using the Max Ruby darts. Now, just to let you know, the testing environment right now, we have pretty much no wind whatsoever. So those are probably the most accurate numbers that you're gonna get uh, when it comes to distance using the Max Ruby darts. Now, with bamboo twos, you might get up to the 160, 170 feet range, but 150 is not bad, and that matches pretty much what all the other reviewers have said about this blaster when it comes to the FPS and everything else. So, 
pretty good performance for an out-of-the-box blaster. Um, $90, I recommend. <music>
very good for this blaster. Uh, as long as you're using fresh darts, you're not gonna have the issue that I ran into where some of them squibbed out. That was because they were out of shape and they, well, were ready, they were ready to go to the rubbish bin. So um, I shouldn't have tested with those, I'll be honest with you. Um, I do appreciate the fact that it is t native Talon Magazine and it is compatible with other Talon Magazines. So that is pretty neat. Um, I tried to do some of the Dart Zone magazines in here and it looks like they might fit but they don't fire properly. So stick with Talon, folks. Um, you can actually use the uh, the Nerf uh, Strife X magazine in here. Um, given the space that's in here, I don't think you need to modify them, but all you have to do is sand them down just like you would for a normal Talon adapter, and you are all set to go there. Who is this blaster for? This blaster is for the intro competitive player. If you're looking for something that's gonna help you out in a 150 and below round, this is your blaster. Uh, it is also for close quarters. I'll be honest with you, you have other uh, blasters that are out there that are similar in uh, size. Um, well, not similar in size, but similar in nature, so to speak. You have the um, the Aeon Pro. Uh, this is closer to an Aeon Pro, but much more comfortable to use when it comes to size. The, the Harrier and the Seagull, much larger blasters. So not something that you're gonna use in close quarters uh, battle. Um, and what I mean by close quarters is when you are in an enclosed space, let's say if you're in an office setting doing some tactical runs, you're gonna want something small that you can prime roll fast and fire. And this is where this blaster excels. Because of its size, it is made for that. Now, for example, let's just show you how it can fold down. Technically, you can fold this down like this. And you have a blaster that is right around 17 to 18 inches, so just a little bit larger than a pistol, but it has a pump grip, which is phenomenal. So it is very small, and that's that's the best thing you can say about it, is that it's just, and actually the worst thing you can say about it is that it's very small, but it's very mighty. So the Unicorn, right around $90, it is definitely worth picking up. You can find them at Out of Darts, and you can find them actually online pretty much anywhere, uh, even on Timu. So yeah. Timu has this one, and it was surprisingly quick delivery. So I want to thank you all for watching Secondhand Blasters. If you have any blasters that you want to go ahead and review or want me to review, go ahead and leave a comment, shoot me an email, and I'll be more than happy to see if I have them in my collection and make that review video for you. Until next time, keep on blasting.